It is time for Mule and Donkey Talk with Steve Edwards. My name's Dave, and it sure is good to be with you here on this 3 o'clock afternoon. It's Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. If you're a longtime watcher, you know what comes next. We only get one, so let's make it a good one, and hopefully a little bit of Mule and Donkey Talk will make it a good one for you. We got folks coming from all across the world saying things like, I sure am glad that I get my Mule and Donkey Talk today, or so glad that I caught you, and we're glad that you caught us too. Um, Of course, mules aren't super happy when you get out there and catch them, at least not at first, but they learn, and we learn too. We learn that we enjoy spending time with you. My name's Dave. This is Steve. And uh, it's been a full week since we talked last. Steve, how's it going out there? Oh, it's going good. We've been getting lots of rain. So we got lots of weeds. Ah, So we're running a weed eater. Maybe I should get, Jess got two sheep. Maybe I should get him some goats too. We were just out at the uh, Arboretum out there, the Bryce Bryce Thompson Arboretum which is about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes uh, east of where you're at in Queen Valley. And uh, man, all that rain that has come out really just makes for a beautiful, beautiful desert landscape. And uh, I'll find a picture here, but there was some green that I just have never seen in the desert. And that Arboretum was really, really cool. Have you and Susan had a chance to go out there? Not not for a while. Uh, we, you know, we've gone out there in the past, you know, but um, then the last time I was up that way was fighting the fire there at uh, Telegraph Fire. I watched that, uh, that 747, the, the, the uh, Arboretum was getting ready to get caught on fire and the fire was coming that way. And here come that 747 down there. Dave, you ain't seen nothing like it. Do you see a 747 500 feet off the ground? That's that cool. is just, oh, that's beyond words, man. So I was watching a uh, Modern Marvels. Do you remember Mar- Modern Marvels television show? It was on Discovery yeah. Channel years ago. I don't think they do any episodes now. Um, but they had an episode on, uh, I don't know exactly what the topic it was. It could have been like extreme jobs or extreme extreme vehicles. Anyways, they talked about firefighting. Um, it was a... Uh, uh, a DC 10 that was fitted for firefighting, you yeah. know, not as big as a, a 737, 747, 747, but still large, large plane. And yeah. uh, he talked about how he loved that job because man, I get to do something that helps people, but I also get to fly heavy aircraft at irregularly low altitudes and he was just saying how much of a thrill it was and just the adrenaline going yep yeah we actually have uh down sierra vista there's a a big military base down there and we actually just had some training about oh 15 miles from here 15 days of it by the way by, by the way and and they were bringing their fitting um aircraft from the military so that they're able to come up here and help too so that we're not just here but for other places you know but it's it's absolutely incredible uh but when you go on one of them fires it's it's something to behold yeah yeah well we're grateful for uh, you and all of the firefighters who go out there and uh give it everything that they got whenever they're called upon Uh, It takes a special breed, and we sure are grateful and happy for it. Uh, Let's see here. Friends, if this is the first time you're ever hanging out with us, there's really only three things you need to know, and I'll get through them real quick here. First thing, please share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like today. You can see some of our friends are already inside YouTube and Facebook here live with us, sharing, uh, saying hello. We want to hear from you as well. The second thing we ask, is you use the comment section to, oh my goodness, I just got the yawns and I couldn't fight it off. Usually I can fight it (laughs) off. Use the comment section to ask any and every mule and donkey question that you got. And if you got a horse question, we've known to, uh, we've known to answer a few horse questions here or there. We'll give it our best shot. And I'll tell you what, uh, you may hear it, get out there. And if you decide, Hey, I don't, I don't like this. That's fine. No one's going to force you to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to pull on Steve's, uh, lifetime of cowboying 
and his 40 plus years of working specifically with the mule and the donkey. That's what we're going to give you. Now, it's worked for a lot of folks, continues to work for a lot of folks, but get out there, give it a try. And if you find something that works better, hey, go for it. But what we're going to aim to do is not only get you the results you're looking for, but prevent you from causing all sorts of problems that you won't see until maybe six months, 12 months, 18 months down the road. So that's the angle that we're coming from, just so you know. Any and every mule and donkey question in the comment section, and now would be a good time to go ahead and put those in there. The third and final thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast. Done real easy. On both Facebook and YouTube, there's a share button. Use it. There's comments. Comment. And there's a like button. Subscribe. Get that one too. All of that tells these platforms that, hey, other mule and donkey folks may appreciate this. Uh, go out there and let them know. So that's what you can do. It really doesn't take a whole lot of effort on your part, but the uh, uh, benefit, the effort to benefit ratio is huge in the favor of benefits. So go ahead and do that. Leslie is watching from a 63 and sunny Decatur, Illinois. Sharon is watching and uh, she's got our first question. We'll come back in a second. Cowboy Ken is watching, partly cloudy in Connecticut where it's 43. Sherman Johnson, Johnson Taxidermy, Norman, Oklahoma, 72 degrees and windy. We're glad that you're here. Gidget is watching. Hey, Gidget, it's been good to see you on YouTube. Thanks for chiming in and seeing us, uh, spending some time with us live. Love that. Sunny, warm in Texas, 66 degrees. Rode my mule today. Mud and green grass everywhere. But sure does beat the alternative, doesn't it? Uh, ta uh, ta Tamar is watching from Alora, Queensland. <laughs> Australia, sunny and clear here today, which means we've gone international. Thank you. Dave O'Brien, East Texas, 63 a dice. Heike Go Cross is walking. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dave, I sent you an email giving you instructions on how you can get me that video uh, if you've got an iPhone. If you don't, send me another message. Let me know, and I'll see if I can figure out another way to do it. Uh, Heike's watching from Averlac, Germany. We've gone international again. Good to have you here. 50 and cloudy over there on the uh, other side of the world. Merlin from Northwest Minnesota, 25 degrees and windy. The sun is shining and Merlin is live and in person out there in Minnesota. It's good to have you here live, Merlin. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, 38 above and windy. Snow is coming in this win uh, weekend. Myra's watching from a cool, partly cloudy Southern California. Our first question comes from Sar Sharon. How do I know which of your saddles I should get in? I'm 67 female with arthritis, so I need light. Steve, what would you say to our friend Sharon? Hey, Sharon, I'm 75. Got 32 broken bones and two replaced hips. Yeah, and probably a little arthritis too. Hey, the trail light, I'm telling you folks, if I'd have known 50 years ago how much it was to ride something lighter, I would have, I would have done this a long time ago, but I was too busy being a cowboy like smell of leather. Without me, I like the smell of riding not the smell of working on my saddles and tack and stuff all the time. Plus that as I get older, things don't work quite like they used to, especially my lifting, throwing shoulders up and this sort of thing. So long story short, trail light saddle. Now, guys, an unpadded seat. Our pelvis is different. We tend to slouch in the saddle. Okay, but the gals, they sit up right, you know, they sit very erect. And they, but they have little pin bones in their hineys. And in order to fix that, uh, we make a padded seat and that works. Now, while we're talking about seats and bottoms and butts or whatever you want to call it, okay? When you're having a problem with a saddle being uncomfortable, try lengthening your stirrups. Try shortening your stirrups. I have people tell me all the time, especially ladies, okay, they uh, they have different pads. Sometimes they got a wool pad, sometimes they got a neoprene pad, sometimes they got whatever pad that they may make up or something, okay? 
So, so it helps them make him feel better. Here's the deal, folks. Okay. Here's the deal. Lengthen your or, or your stirrups or shorten your stirrups. Now, the other thing, too, if you have leather fenders, you will find they will pull on you and, and really make you uncomfortable. Unless you wet them and turn them, that makes them better. The majority of folks out there that I see with their saddles have got their fenders improperly adjusted. So there's some little tips, okay? And the older we are, I, I hear you, little gal. It's tough to throw it up there, but get you that 18-pound saddle. Most of all, give me a call, 602-999-6853. We'll talk saddles and get you set up. One of the great things about that saddle, too, is it's built for the long haul. Uh, now, what you get... Uh, with today's trail light saddle is the improvements that have been made over the years, the adjustments to the D-rings, the placements, uh, number of D-rings. You get the adjustments uh, in all of the manufacturing that Steve has improved upon. But you're really getting, if you go back and you look at the saddle that Steve's been riding, Steve rides a trail light saddle. And that thing has, uh, has seen some miles and it just keeps on going. A lot of times mm -hmm. folks ask us, uh, you know, about used saddles and stuff like that. There's all sorts of reasons why we don't do used saddles, but one of them is they're just rarely ever available. There's no way to keep them in stock because uh, either number one, uh, folks don't get rid of them, or number two, when they do get rid of them, they hold, hold their value real well and they like finding someone uh, who they can sell them off to. Uh, they're just great saddles. So um, that's what folks have said. That's not what we say. Of course, we'd say it too, but that's what folks have been saying about them. So Sharon, there you go. And yes, do give Steve a call because he will spend time with you. Uh, he won't answer the phone uh, when you call. You need to leave a voicemail. If you don't leave a voicemail, uh, you won't hear back. So make sure you leave a voicemail and, uh, and that's the way to get the process started there. Uh, going back, Rory is watching from Southwest Ohio, clear and cold. Hey, Christina from British Columbia, Canada today. Beautiful, warm, early spring day, 17 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. You know what? I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit anyways, but hopefully you're staying warm enough and we're staying cool enough. That's the way it goes down here in Arizona, just trying to stay cool, and you're just trying to stay warm. We'll just call it a win. Marsha is watching from a beautiful Virginia, got the rest of the barnyard clean because it was finally dry, and I could get my truck through the mud. Hey, nothing like a good barnyard cleaning. Hey, Joel is watching from Idaho, Rupert, Idaho, around 60 degrees. Rick is watching from southeast Minnesota, 50 and windy. Uh, Dave already responded down to my email. I had to cut the video down 10 seconds to go, get it to go. Great. Glad to hear it. Uh, Lane is watching from Sunny Spring River, Oregon, and has a question. How do you manage your manure when you had mules, Steve? Well, I actually just pile it up and let it... Uh cure out really good and we use it in our gardens uh, i just take it out of the out of the corrals each day and uh we just start piling it up and then i take my tractor and i turn it over a few times and turn it over and mulch it up and pretty soon my wife is just really happy because her tomatoes look good there you go all right paul is watching from gazelle california beautiful day here uh, Dave O'Brien says, Steve, I tried your downhill saddle pad on my high wither Tennessee Walker horse. It worked great. We've heard reports of that. Haven't we, Steve? Yep. Yep. Sure have. Yeah. The saddle pad we've heard, we don't go out there trying to sell it to ho horse folks, but we've heard, uh, testimonies that folks have enjoyed it. But we yep. do say, just so everyone knows, we do say that the saddle is not meant for the horse for the same reason Horse saddles are not meant for the mules. There's too many differences in the structure and the design of the animal. Uh, you're going to cause problems trying to do this on that or that on this. So just so anyone knows, hey, saddle pad, go for it. Give it a try. Saddles, stay away from uh, mule saddles on a horse. Let's see here. Marsha says, hit the like button. That's right, Marsha, hit that like button. Uh, let's see. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Will it ever come out in black? Will the trail light saddle ever come out in black, Steve? Okay, folks, here's the deal with black. When you, when you have leather, you have to dye it, uh, with a leather dye and it's put on like almost like spraying paint in a way 
but it's it's rubbed on with with, with several different ways of doing it. The problem with black is the biggest problem is this. They are so hard to take care of. When you are riding, trail riding, you're taking it in and out of the trailer. The mule is banging against a brush, going against a tree, maybe different things going on. And you end up scratching it. Well, when you scratch it, now you've got to be able to, to put the dye back into it. Okay. So it's just a lot of work to maintain it. And here's the problem too. When you're making a black saddle, then, then trying to make it so that everything looks uniform is really difficult. So, and it can be done. Don't get me wrong. It can be done. But the big thing is your maintenance. You're a trail rider. Now you're going to be showing. Yeah. You're going to be covering the saddle up every time you take it off. You're going to put it in a, a big cover and you're going to slide it into your rack and keep it, keep it that way. But when you're a trail rider, you're going to beat it to death. If you want a black saddle, I can do it, but I'm going to guarantee you all these years, I've yet to meet anybody yet that said, man, it was a good deal to get a black saddle. Awesome. All right. Next question. Uh, this one comes in at more of a comment. And uh, it's about hennies. Folks got a lot of things that they want to talk about hennies. They say you should be able to tell the difference just by looking at it. So, says the head and face of the animal look more like a donkey, it's a mule. But if it's more like a horse, it's a hinny. There are more ways. I have a lot to write about. Have a great day. So, Steve, we're not going to get into arguments or anything like that. We're just sharing our experience. And uh, we'll say that we stand by our experience, but hey, if you can tell it, go for it. Steve, can you just talk a little bit about why it may not be that simple? Of course, we've always said really the only way to know is to get a uh, blood sample test or a hair follicle test, yeah, but DNA you don't testing. know who the mom is. You don't know who the dad is. You've just got this animal. Why is it more complicated than just looking? Okay. So it's, you have to have a DNA test. That's the most important part. Okay, so now look, I wrote an article several years ago and I showed two mules, both nice looking mules, keen headed, nice bodies and this sort of thing. And I said, which mule is a henny and which one is a standard mule? And I showed close-ups of the heads, distance away, things like this, probably about four pictures of each. Nobody can look at it and say, say, yeah, that's a henny, that's a not. Nobody did. Nobody hit it right on the money. There's different reasons. They said, oh, the head's smaller. The head is bigger. Uh, yada, yada, all kinds of stuff. No, there's no way. No way you can look at it and say it is a henny. No way. I've, I've ridden <laughs> a lot of hennies. I've judged a lot of shows with hennies in them. And, and I ask him, how did you know it was a henny? Because of his head. Da, 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 da. No, no, no. DNA, period. No other way. So the only reason I bring that up uh, is not because we want to go, he said, she said, he said, he said, she said, she said. That's not why. I look at this as an opportunity. I don't know the answer. Okay? Steve says yeah. something. I believe Steve. I've known Steve for, you know, back when I was graduating high school. So I trust Steve. However, I know that Steve is not afraid of any question, uh, even questions about his products. So when I don't know a question or an answer, I'm going to ask. And so I'm asking not because I want to get in it with anyone, but because, okay, why is it not enough just to look? Well, here's where that information comes from. And, uh, and so there you go. That's why I asked the question. I appreciate it, Steve. Next question comes in from Andrea from Alabama, where it is sunshiny and cool. Uh, let's see. I didn't even know they made a 50 pound block of salt. Um, let's say how many hours a day can you keep a donkey in a stall? She will have access to hay from a slow feeder bag, water, and now a 50 pound uh, block of white salt. She has had no training, but I'm about to start training with your come along rope. My goal is about 30 minutes a day. I want to work with her 30 minutes a day, but I want to keep her off the grass and keep her from foundering. I thought I could keep her in the stall when I'm not working with her. I've heard your story of your wife's donkey mule that stayed in a stall 24 of its 26 years of life. I was uncertain 
if you meant solely in a stall except you when you were working with it. Uh, also, thank you for calling me back a few weeks ago. I was so excited to get to talk with the Steve Edwards. Oh, folks, Steve loves talking with you. Give him a call. Steve, what would you say to our new friend here, Andrea? Well, Andrea, you know, you and I visited in this sort of thing. Uh, you know, yes, take them out. Yes, go for walks and this sort of thing. Uh, yes, uh, uh, do different training things with them. And, and that's important. But yes, that's my meal, my wife's meal. All the personal meals that we had, all the, all the years that we had them, never been out on a pasture. Never, okay? I shouldn't say never. On an odd time when I was packing back in the mountains, then something like that. But for the most part, no. They stayed in their stall. You can keep track of them. You can keep track of their health, their wealth, and everything. So, yes, nothing wrong with keeping them in a stall. They'll be just fine. You know, uh, I can tell you that uh, one of my old meals, Popeye, who I give to Bob de Bowman, one of my best friends, Popeye right now is in the Phoenix Zoo. And he's been in the Phoenix Zoo now, oh, what, five years? And uh, he, he, he kind of got crippled up, uh, and we won't go into that. But anyway, now he's there. He's got it made. So don't be afraid. Leave them in a stall, folks. They're more healthier. You can keep track of them. You can feed them right. So a uh, funny story. Years ago, my family and I, we had purchased a um, a subscription, or what do you call it? A season pass, an annual pass to the Phoenix Zoo. And Steve and I had started working together again. We worked together back before I was uh, vo full-time vocational ministry, uh, or early days of full-time vocational ministry, rather. And then, uh, and then when I was in the ministry, we took some time off. And then when I left the ministry, we uh, came back. So anyways, started working with Steve a little bit again. And I had two young boys. So an annual pass to the zoo made a lot of sense. So we go to the zoo. We get to the livestock area. And I see what appears to me to be a mule. And so I'm excited. Hey, I'm getting back into this mule world with Steve Edwards. And I take a picture and I see. There he is. That's Popeye. Great mule. After I get that picture, after I send that picture, Steve writes back. He goes, oh, yeah, that's Popeye. I was like. What in the world? How does he know who this mule is? Like, I just take a picture of a random mule and Steve Edwards right back. Oh, yeah, there's Popeye. Yeah. This man, this man knows his mules, folks. And I <laughs> sent him a picture of Popeye. And immediately I was like, all right, that's good. I got a lot to learn. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, that was a fun moment. Uh, OK, continuing on, we've got Dave O'Brien. Uh, watch. Oh, here we got David Pingelli. Uh Watching from uh, Georgia, I have the ultra light and the trail life light. My wife likes the ultra and the non padded seat. Also, forgot to tell you, Steve, I sold the thirty five. Is that a thirty five like vehicle? Yeah, is that his truck? Ford. Yeah, his thirty five Ford car. Wow, um, he's had it for years. Congratulations, man! I feel like I've got a picture of that somewhere here. I'll see if I can. Yeah, you uh, do. You do. I he was do. supposed to give me that car because I helped him with his mules. I'm dead now. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nope, that's 32. Oh, that's the 32? Yeah, the black it's a black uh it's a black car. Oh, maybe I don't have that one uh, on yeah. cue. Well, hey, there's a 32. <laughs> All right. Uh Andrea, sunny and cool in Alabama. Watch love watching these videos. Scott from South Carolina, 60 and sunny and windy. Question. Is it necessary? to change a Liverpool bit from a full cheek, double twisted snaffle, even though he is nice and soft. It's the thing about the, the double twisted wire snaffle bit is it's always communicating to the tongue. Every time you say, whoa, it goes into the tongue. Whoa, into the tongue. All right. And eventually, you know, it can get frustrating to the mules. Mules don't care about their mouth anyway. So the nice thing about the Liverpool, folks, and get this in your mind, 
We always want to get softer. We want to get softer. And we do that number one with the way we move our hands. Now, I was uh, telling a guy today, you know, when he was, when he was, uh, sent me some video and he was moving his hands too far. I said, just turn your wrist only. Then go with it. Now, the nice thing about the Liverpool is it now communicates the corners of the mouth and puts a little pressure on the whole tongue. And then the, the main difference with it is this, the chain that goes on the back, the curb chain. Now it's starting to touch really nice nerves on the bottom of the chin. And those nerves gives you a nice feel. Corners of the mouth gives a nice feel. In other words, I'm telling you that it's, it's nice to go to the Liverpool, just like it's nice to go to the trail rider bit because now you're being lighter, lighter, okay? You don't have to pull as much, don't have to use as much movement in your hands. And pulling is the wrong word, movement in your hands in order to communicate to do it. With that Liverpool, you have a lot of adjustments, one up will ring up on the top and then two levers on the bottom, and you can do it accordingly, okay? But just as you do this, folks, anytime you put a bit in a mule's mouth, always let it hang down. If it's a molly mule, bump in the incisors, the front teeth, okay? If it's a John mule, you have canines on each side, bump in the canines, all right? Now, what it's gonna do is make them uncomfortable. They're gonna bang against their mouth, they're gonna open and close their mouth, and they're gonna really be uncomfortable. People worry about that. Don't worry about it. All the mule is doing is saying, I need to figure out what this thing is in my mouth and how can I be comfortable? Remember their life? Comfortable, uncomfortable. Give them time, don't get in a hurry. Especially if you get an older mule, people have screwed them up bad, okay? These so-called mule folks that are horse folks, that are turned mule folks, which is nice, okay? But they're still using the horse techniques, okay? There's, there, anyway, I'm not gonna go into it anymore about that. That's a, that's a sort of subject. But anyway, give them time. Yes, you should go to Liverpool bit. Now, anytime you go to a finished bit, Liverpool or my trail rider, anytime, do not plan on staying there. Use it for a while, quit. Go back to the snaffle bit. Double twisted wire full cheek for your drivers. And that's driving itself. But when you are building a foundation or need to fix a problem, the mule rider's martingale. So the mule rider's martingale for a saddle mule or a driving mule. And what it does is it sets the head, puts the nose on a vertical, balances them out, frames them out. And that's what you're looking for. Good question. Awesome. Next question comes from Sharon. My four and a half month old baby gelding is having his mother move to a friend's place. Any suggestions on how to make this process easier? You've already given me an outline of the benefits of removing his mom. I have the come along rope. Haven't started his formal training yet. Thanks for all you do to help us mule newbies. Sharon, what would you say, Steve? You betcha. Good for you. Ain't nothing like raising your own baby. You've got a wonderful world uh, travel coming up with you. So yes, it's tough. Okay. But now get this in your mind, folks. Once a mom, always a mom. Once a child, always a child. All right. Soon as mom comes back on that property, that, that meal is going to want to consider mom. Now, not only because it's mom, it can be any horse, any equine, comes on the property, that mule is going to immediately want to spend time with it because the horse is more like the leader, okay? The mule is more like the, the, the Serbian, okay? So here's the deal. You have, over the next few months, I would say six months, a time to build a firm foundation with your baby without mama's influence. I congratulate you, man. You that took that takes a lot because it's tough on you. It's tough on them babies. 
that baby's going to be going back and forth. The mom is going to be nickering and the mother instinct in you may come out and it's going to be hard on you. I know. Okay. I, I've seen it. And so let's go back. Spend that time getting that meal to come to you. I, I, I don't know what I've done with it, but I had a guy send me a video here a while back of a cult that he has started and he imprinted it from the very beginning. He laid that cult down. He picked up all four feet. Now I'm not, I'm not saying laying down is a good deal. Okay. Don't listen. Don't listen to that. But he, he trained that mule to pick up his feet. That mule followed him everywhere and left his mama. Actually, it was a horse. Now that I think about it, left his mama. And he just wanted to do the same thing with the mule. He wanted to say, he said, is there going to be a difference? I said, oh yeah. <laughs> Night and day with the mule, you've got a donkey, a mule and a horse, all three. With a horse, you got a horse, of course, of course, right? Anyway, so here's the deal. It's going to take time. You're going to have some heartbreaks. You're going to, you're going to cuss me sometimes. That's going to happen, okay? And don't worry about it. You'll get over it. You'll get over it. But listen, it's going to be awesome. Congratulations on your new journey. Call me anytime. You know, you know that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, cruising right along here. We've got more friends hanging out with us. Uh, let's see here. Jerry from Fort Benton, Montana, 56 degrees. I have to say to aim, I have to say amen to Steve and his trail light saddle. I have one. I am 75 also, and I love his saddle. We love hearing that. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Jerry's always real kind with his words and we do appreciate it. Uh, Camille is watching when the John is 10 months old, how much should it know? He should know to pick up all four of his feet. He should know to stand still and quiet while you're grooming him. He should know when you pick up on that lead right, rope to, to wait and move at your command. In other words, your communication. Um, he should know to stay out of your space. If I'm going to tell you anything at all, folks, the cute and cuddly babies, everybody, oh, he's coming. Don't do that, folks. Let him understand his space, your space. No equine is ever allowed in your space. If you can reach out, what's your space? If you can reach out and you can touch him, that's as close as they need to be. You, you cannot believe the force of having that baby, a 10 month old, knocking you down and trampling you. It can happen. Okay. It can happen. So yes, uh, that'll give you a pretty good idea, but always remember they don't come into your space ever. Every moment is learning with them. You might think that, Oh, our education stopped and now I'm just talking to a friend. They're still learning. They're still taking it in. And so, uh, that, that was a huge, huge thing for me to understand was that every moment is education for them. Uh, okay. You showed a braided hobble a few weeks back. I would really like to get a photo of it and possibly some measurements. Uh, there is a product I would like to try and pattern out of. Um, so I would imagine the braided hobble is the one that we sell on our website, right, Steve? No, I don't sell a braided hobble. The braided hobble is a rawhide hobble. Uh, and if you know how to braid rawhide, then you understand how to make it. Um, uh, the, uh, we sell a rope hobble. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, and that rope hobble is right now, uh, you know, it's not available right now because we're, we're, we're needing the type of rope that I need to, to make some. So here's the thing, folks. Get this in your mind that I spent all these years trying to figure out why. Why? Okay. Why does my mule do that? Why do I scrape off hide? Why won't he let me catch him? You got the idea lots of why's. The ropes that I use to make my halter is not just any rope, okay? The rope that I use to make my come along ropes is not just any rope. The rope that I use on my hobbles is not just any rope. It took me a while to figure out stretching and things like this because there are no buckles on this on this set of hobbles. It's strictly a sliding knot. And if you know how to do a, a, a three braid flat or a four braid round, 
then you're able to, you probably flat is probably the best thing really uh, for that. But anyway, uh, uh, Dave, do we still got a picture of that? I don't Give recall them? where, I don't recall where it is now. That's pretty tough. Uh, I don't, I don't think we have a picture on the website right now of the rope hobble because, because we, we've, we've put it to one side for now until we start getting some in stock because we don't have any. I think you close that up, right? Yeah. If you want, I can find the photo of the rope hop, hobble. Yeah. If the person would be interested in that. Otherwise, it, the braided rawhide hobble is you better know how to braid. If, if you know how to braid, then you can make yourself a nice set of hobbles. Yeah. Um, so over on the website, uh, I'm looking right now. Uh, let's see. Hobble. Because what I can do is I could put a link directly to. Now they're discontinued for now because because we're having a hard time getting the rope uh, for them. So once we get the rope, it, gets them. help remind me, was it this one, Steve? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. What happened to Dave? Awesome. I'll put a link in the comment section uh, and you can access that and uh, take a look at it there. Barbara's watching sunny and 60 in Missouri, but windy. It's been a while since I was able to join on Tuesday, but I so enjoy learning from you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, let's see he, here. Burson is watching from Farmington. It's been raining for the last few days, so we've had a lot of mud. Howdy from the Four Corners. Uh, Christine says, I read The Mule by Harvey Riley, and he is hating a lot on white mules. I have a white mule, Lest, uh, white mule Lustino Cross. He is awesome and still young. How true is it today? Is it still today that white mules are junk? <laughs> Hi, Christine. Boy, I tell you what, that gal was at my clinic and she was intent. Uh, I could always see her writing down messages and looking and this sort of thing. Uh, she was great. So let's go back, folks. I never give it a lot of thought about colors until I really started spending a lot of time in the saddle and I started watching animals and this sort of thing. I can tell you that, that when you get away from the dark bay and the mealy nose uh, color, it seems to be a big difference in the way they think. I, I've been amazed to think about it, but until I read Harvey Riley's uh, little booklet there on maintaining, he, he took care of all the mules in the 1860s. And until I read that, started going, oh, that's some answers to my questions. That's some answers to my questions. Now, here's the thing about white is that if you rode white, you were usually an Indian chief or a general or something high up in the military when they were riding livestock, okay? And it was just a sign of, of notability of, uh, of being a king or something like this. Matter of fact, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in King Solomon, it says all of his boys climbed on their asses, their white asses and rode off, okay? Now, some scriptures don't say white asses, but they do say asses, which is the proper name for a biblical donkey, okay? So one of the downsides of white is this, okay? Cancer. It's really easy for them to get a type of cancer from the sun. The sun. Melanoma, I think, is one of the names of it is. And especially if they're pink around the eyes and around the anus, then you're going to have a problem, okay? Uh, I was just looking here to see if I could find something here on that that I was looking particular, a note on it. But but yes, it is definitely a, uh, uh, it's definitely true that I, that I have seen that the, uh, that the colored mules, the, the paints, uh, and I've seen the same thing on horses too, but it didn't really, I didn't really get it until I started really getting into the detail of the mule. But I found that the dark bay with the mealy nose was a more consistent mule. Uh, the uh, black 
uh, with the mealy nose was more of a consistent mule. When we started getting into any kind of color, any kind of white or anything like that, there seemed to be some lackadaisical part of it. It seems like I had to maybe dig a little bit more, not, not often, you know, just depending on, on the animal. But I, uh, when it comes down to the white, especially in Arizona, I pretty much try to stay, uh, stay away from, tell people stay away from them. I suggest that you always wear a fly mask. Uh, that fly mask does a great job of uh, the ultraviolet rays getting up on the eyes. The big thing is up underneath the tail around the anus is, you know, getting a problem there. So, um, yeah, he's kind of down on different colored mules, and he's right. I've seen it in harness. I've seen it in driving. And I've seen it in riding, and uh, it, it's amazed me, but it just happened to come about when I started having some problems. So there you are, Christine. Keep smiling. Awesome. Um. Oh, it, my comments just jumped all over the place without me even doing nothing. Okay, Leslie, I am going on my first big mule ride um, in Southern Illinois. I own two of your saddles and britchens. Do you have any advice? One of my mules is kind of buddy sour. Ah, all mules are buddy sour. Some a little bit more than others. My suggestion always is, folks, when you get, get to doing this stuff, is number one, think about their health. Be sure to think about the water that they're going to drink. I always tell everybody, when you're getting ready to put them into a trailer or do a, a, a bigger ride than normal, electrolytes, super important. A week to 10 days ahead of time, make sure they start getting electrolytes in their water. A week or two, seven to 10 days, take the electrolytes and put it in the corner of their mouth and give them 10, 20 cc's of electrolytes, okay? That keeps it up, because here's the problem. You'll hear people always saying, oh, mules, they don't drink much water. No, they better, or they'll be dehydrated, okay? That is probably one of the biggest problems that mule has, mules have, is not drinking enough water when they're out on the side of a mountain. When you come up to water, give them time to get a drink. They'll lip it a little bit. They'll maybe get a little sip and then they'll walk away. And then they'll come back to it and get another sip. And then they'll walk away. They'll stand there. Don't get in a hurry because they're trying to figure out about this water thing. All right. Now, the other thing is, second thing is, if you're going to take them on a ride like that, you need to feed them whole oats. Whole oats builds energy builds energy and that's really important so that way they don't take off their top line and start losing their top line whole oats gives them energy now if you're like a lot of people your mules are already way too fat okay so if so then go ahead and and ride them use them without the the, the grain okay but if they're starting to get uh, uh lethargic and not keeping up and this sort of thing, you may have to give them some whole oats. The next thing is this. Do you think buddy sour is tough? I have actually been on animals that have reared up in the air, flipped over and hit on the ground with me under them. I've been on animals that ran faster backwards than they did straight ahead. I've been on animals that ran sideways just as fast as they did forward. Why? because they want to be with other equine not a buddy so much okay i'm going to guarantee you i've seen animals come from far away come to my ranch for training or i've been uh, on some outfit and people come in with their animals when i say outfit some ranch and they come in cowboys come in with their own animals and automatically these mules start following love these mules are like a teenage boy okay and looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> so something to watch out for, Dave. Anyway, so so going back to this, put your mule riders martingale on. You're going to need to be able to communicate, and you're going to have to be tougher on them than ever. Yes, you are. Okay, because here's the deal: they're going to say, "I want to be with this other animal up here, and I'll do whatever I can." Listen, right, left, right, left. Ask. Right brain, left brain, listen to me is what you're saying. Ask. 
They're not listening to you. Tell. Boom, 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 boom. They're not listening to you. Demand. Ask, tell, demand. If you got to rip their foes face off, if they're going to have a strawberry patch on each corner, in other words, they're bleeding, okay? Then it's why it's their fault, it's not your fault. Because when you pull on them, this is what people tend to do. You're going to go to this, this ride, and there's going to be more experts than there's going to be flies, okay? Everybody's an expert. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Anyway, so here's the deal. They're going to say, take them around in circles. That won't work, okay? It'll work for maybe a time or two. I've seen them suckers go around in a circle, and they run just as fast sideways. Yeah, I've had to fix them, break them of that problem. Will the problem still come up? Yes, but at least give them a tool to fix it. So let's go back to this, all right? They're going to walk back and forth in the corral sometimes. They're going to paw. They're going to whinny. They want to be with all the other equine. Yeah, it can be frustrating times. But just do what I just told you right there. Put that new Riders Martingale on there, okay? And uh, and ride around uh, when you're riding. Now, if you want to start figuring out control before you get in the saddle, put your come along on and just walk around the roads, around the corrals and sort of thing. Let them see everything, okay? But you let them see them, see it from straight ahead. Don't let them look over to the left. If they look over to the left, they took their mind off of you. Bump them. If they look over to the right, they took their mind off of you. Bump them. When you're on the trail, same thing. They're only to look straight ahead. Everybody gets to shooting and talking. Hey, how about you, buddy? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Everybody gets talking back and forth. And pretty soon the mule takes off and runs. Or pretty soon the mule does a 360 and you hit the ground. Or pretty soon, no, no, pay attention to what's going on. It's a great training time, okay? Super training time. But I'm going to tell you, uh, you, 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 it can be quite stressful. And yes, buddy sour, they're all buddy sour. Some a little bit more than others. There you go, Leslie. You got your answer right there. If you got any follow-ups, let me know. Gail is watching. Love this live program. We love you being here live with us, Gail. Thank you. Uh, Jack is watching from Johannesburg. Checking in. Winter came back with a vengeance. 25 and windy. Jack is holding down the fort and fighting the good fight there against the winter. Bill says sharing to the Midwest pages. Sunny and 44 degrees and windy. Uh, usually it's uh, Ohio and Indiana. Did we add another state, Bill, or just condensing? Rory says, no way. Best damn mule I ever owned was a white with a dark undertones. Called him Gus for short. Julius Augustus Caesar. He only tried to kill me once. <laughs> hey, That's a winner can, right there. Yeah, I can also tell you that the greatest military general in the, you know, back out west out here, uh, rode white mules. It was his favorite one. You know, for one thing, he wanted everybody to see that he was general. For one thing, okay, but uh, uh, he he that that was his color. He just liked to ride a white mule. Okay, have I seen some white mules? I wish I'd have never seen. Yes, I've seen some of them that I thought they were just dumber in a box of rocks. Now, don't get me wrong. There's always one to maybe be a little bit different, but you know. He said, listen to his words, white with gray undertones. Yes. Okay. Now that helps. Okay. Because there is some, you know, there is a possibility there. So good for you. Next question comes from Cheryl. My, e my mules are eating poo. They are nine months old. Are they lacking something? I worm, their, I worm them every month per my vet. Every month? Wow. I've... Huh. That's the first time I've ever heard every month, you know, you know, maybe every six months, maybe, but that's a lot of ivermectin, you know, now, huh. uh, I suppose it's ivermectin to feed. Okay, here's the deal, folks. Why are they chewing and eating all the time? Be especially babies, but, but as they get older, they're still going to be doing it. They chew because it makes their mouth feel good. These teeth on these equine erupt. In other words, they go longer. That's why you have to go to the equine dentist to have them filing down and keep them flat and everything balanced and framed up, okay? 
They're eating poop because, not because they're bored, not because they more, need more feed, not because they're missing something, because it makes their mouth feel good. 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? Uh, uh, over at the Phoenix Zoo, they are uh, a, a they, they have to have their stalls almost spick and span all the time. They can't hardly be any poop on the ground at all. They're constantly cleaning it up as part of the FDA requirements. FDA requirements. Now let's go back. Okay. Make sure your babies are in two separate corrals. Number one thing. Number one thing, two separate corrals. Now, second thing, okay. You are not going to get them to quit from, from chewing on something. Some people think it's grazing. It is not. Okay. So take yourself, find out what trees have limbs and what trees are not bad for equine. Okay. Now out here we use a, a Palo Verde. It's a green type limb. And like the word says in Spanish, green tree. Okay. And they love chewing on it. At the Phoenix Zoo, they, they take all of their green tree limbs and they give them one and they just about always have type, some type of tree limb in there for them to chew on. Makes them feel good, makes their mouth feel good, yada, yada, okay? So I, 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 you really need to question this vet about worming every month. I, that's beyond me. I'd like to know why. Uh, I've been doing this for a lot of years and I've never heard such a thing. Matter of fact, I, you know, ivermectin, <laughs> ivermectin uh, is, is, is a great little product for a lot of different things, even for humans. But anyway, um, you might want to find out about that for sure. But give them a tree limb. Find out what's not going to be poisonous to them, what would be good to them, uh, and throw it in there and let them chew on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Awesome. Uh, next question. We talked about this at the very beginning, and I did not know this question was going to come up. Uh, Cassia asks, can I use Steve's saddle on a horse or vice versa? Will it hurt the horse? Now, I said earlier that no, you cannot, but I did not share why. Steve, would you go into a little bit more? Well, I said because the bone structure is different, but will you share a little bit more in depth so that it comes from you and not from me? Okay, so folks... Here's one of the downsides of you, okay? And is we put a saddle on and say, yep, run my hand all up underneath there, run the hand all up underneath here and move it around. It's not touching here and there. Yep, it fits. You cannot tell. It is impossible for you to know how that tree, that bar is laying on that animal's back when you have the wool on the bottom and the leather on top, you cannot feel it. You cannot see it. It is impossible. Impossible. Okay. Now I have taken just to tell you, you know, see, I, I tried all this stuff. Okay. And, and I, I have a lot of fun at my clinics because I get a lot of mm, professionals. Yeah. Yeah. And they got it figured out. And who bugs me the most? Yeah, get this one. Saddle fitters. Saddle fitters. Okay. They can they go and they fit up a tree to fit your animal and say that's the one you want. Here's the downside. Now, I'm getting around to your question, but I need I need you all to see the whole picture here. Okay. When you go into any saddle store, any company that's selling saddles, and you see them all standing out out there. There's really only two saddles out there. There's a bunch of manufacturers, but there's really only two saddles out there. The tree is what defines the saddle, the tree, okay? The tree says, I'm a semi-quarter horse, narrow, full quarter horse, wider. All of them, all the ones that you see out there basically have two trees. Now. You'll have some companies that say, yep, yeah, I've got this Arizona tree and it fits everything. Or I've got this tree and it only fits that. And they try to individualize on their own. Okay. Steve, it sounds like you. No, I got a little bit more evidence than that. Okay. 
The bone structure on a mule and a horse are night and day difference. On a mule, the bone structure is donkey. So therefore, scapula go up and down like this, okay? Scapula, the shoulders are V-shaped. Horses are A-shaped, okay? So you need a breast collar on the horse to keep the saddle from going back. You need a breeching on a mule to keep the saddle from going forward. But we are not going to pin upon a breeching. A breeching balances the saddle. Now let's go on. What's going to happen with you is that since the 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 scapula not so much the wither okay now if you're trying to say that your mule's got a good wither you're putting the saddle too far forward wither has nothing to do with going forward on a mule nothing okay because of the scapula the front of my bars now listen to that word my bars not these other so-called mule bars because they say they are, and I can just look, take a look at the saddle and tell you the back half is stitched up, won't work on your mule. You're going to rub that spine, okay? The spine. There are three bumps in the back, right where your skirting comes down, and it'll rub on that because it's sewed in the back. Look at your horse saddles. They're all sewed to, to, together in the back there, okay? And my, with my bars, my bars come have a little bit of a twist, but then come up in the front. Horse bars go straight and then they have a twist. They have a twist to go around the wither. My bars, if you put that on there, it's going to bang on that wither and it's going to create a lot of problems. And, okay, my bars set more up off of the mule's spine. People say, well, it sets too high. No, it don't. No, it don't. If you want to create a problem on a mule, put that saddle down low. People look at the back of my saddle and say, well, sticking up like this. Yeah, better. It better because you want it up off the spine. That spine is completely different, night and day different on a horse. When you put my saddle on a horse, you prepare to get bucked off and end up in the hospital. I've got a lot of tell stories I can tell you. One guy in particular in the, uh, in uh utah horse trainer trainer he started training mules so he got a saddle he said i want to start using he started calling me up saying man this saddle i can sure ride it when i got a bronc da, 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 da. then next thing i know i get a phone call from him hey steve it really works good on a horse no it don't don't put it on there you're going to bridge now this is the final part about it between the 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 uh, shoulders and the back end you're going to bridge a quest across on a horse. Horses' backs, for the most part, have a little bit more slope to it. Not much, okay? But it's the way their ribs are made that creates a problem. So it bridges, and now you're touching on the front and on the rear, and you're creating pressure points, okay? On my saddle, you tighten up the back cinch for the mule. On the horse, you tighten up the front cinch on the horse. On the back, on the front cinch on my mule, you can slide your hand underneath there. The back cinch on the horse, you want it snug, never loose. The back foot will go up underneath there, but also the saddle cantilevers. Where do you white, see white spots on on any equine? Where do you see them? Up on the front. Why is that? Oh, because it's pinching them. No, no, no. It's because you over tighten your cinches on the front and you didn't tighten the cinch on the back, okay? And, or you had no cinch at all, or you had the cinch hanging down. And now your saddle's cantilevering, what's it doing? Rubbing on the scapula, rubbing on the, the wither, rubbing on all of the mark, all of the tendons and muscles in behind that scapula. It's not the saddle, folks. It is your over-tightening the front cinch and not using the back cinch. So going back to this, if you want to get bucked off or you want to soar your horse, put that saddle on there. Put my saddle on. You'll soar them. You'll get yourself bucked off. And you'll be calling me saying, dang, Steve, I wish I listened to you. So please don't put it on there. And remember, folks, go watch the videos. Dave has given you guys, you know, anytime you get a video from me or buy something, Dave just don't send you the one video. 
you get a lot of them. I'm just looking over here, Dave, at this uh, at this picture, in instructional video library. You didn't give this lady just the saddle fit video and the trailer loading video. You gave her how to install a come along. You gave her how to make a, a, a how to install a rope halter. You gave her how to let's see here. Uh, oh, you gave her the whole saddle course, the whole saddle course, and the one on fitting her animal, and on top of that, sur single training, and on top of that, you gave them spurs. Okay, all digital, all free. Look what Dave did for you. Okay, so folks, going back to this, there it is. Don't put your saddle, my saddle, on your horse. Now, anybody else's, you go ahead, okay? But mine, you're going to create a problem. There you are, Dave. Great. Uh, next question. Actually, uh, this is not a question. Steve, you sent over some photos to me, and I wanted to make sure that we uh, took a moment to get to those. So I'm going to go ahead, and uh, we'll start with this one that I've got up here on the screen. And you just tell me, you just tell me as how you want me to move. Okay, folks, look at this saddle on this mule. And tell me if you see any problems. Look at the cinches. Look at the britching. Look at the saddle. Chime in there. Tell me what you see. Now, I'm going to keep on talking here. Uh, when I come back from Argentina, and I'm leaving for Argentina on the 27th of this month, I'll be gone about 10 days, all right? When I come back, I'm going to do a little digital video we're going to have on YouTube and, and maybe Facebook. I don't know. Dave can tell me. But while you all are writing in there and telling us what you see right and wrong about this picture, uh, I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to I'm going to shoot a little short video on white spots on on these animals, on saddle fitters. Listen, these saddle fitters have no clue about a mule. They may have a little bit of a clue on a horse. I've yet to see any of them yet. Any of them answer the question right. Why do I have white spots on the, the on the uh, horse or mule? Okay, why are the white spots there? Okay, I've had I hear all these excuses. Most of all, it's too tight. That's not it. Okay. So anyway, anybody, what do we see here, Dave? What are we seeing about this saddle and britching and cinches? So we have uh, we do have we do have friends watching, but uh, Judy's the only one and made the comment that it looks a little forward. Yeah, it, it, Judy, yes, you're right. It is a lot forward. It's setting directly on top of the scapula. Notice the front cinch is up underneath the front leg. Okay, so now we're going to not only are we beating the scapula to death, but now we're going to get cinch sores, and then, you, and then you're going to have a problem, and especially with this kind of cinches. These kind of cinches, these rope cinches are horrible, Okay. They're really easy to, to get dirty. They're really easy to turn into a piece of sandpaper. They're horrible. Notice the breaching is too far forward. Look at the hip safe on the top. It's too far forward. It's at the point of the croup. It needs to be between the dock of the tail and the point of the croup. So it needs to go back about four inches, okay, in order to be right. And then you adjust your breaching correctly. The breaching is basically sitting in the wrong place. But the hip safe is going to allow the saddle to go forward. So what's the matter with the saddle? The saddle is on top of the scapula. Now, here's what the customer told me. Steve, your saddle fit my other mule really good. But it's not fitting my new mule at all. And I said, well, how did you find that out? My saddle fitter, the saddle fitter that come out, said I need a wider saddle. I automatically knew. Automatically knew that they put that saddle up on that scapula. They said it needs a seven inch or, or nine inch wide uh, in, in the uh, gullet. Why? Because they had the saddle in the wrong place. Look, the saddle is standing straight up in the air. It's not level. She's not riding balanced. She's standing way back up on his kidneys, okay? Not only is she beating the, the, the scapula to death, putting cinch sores on, but she's beating the kidneys up because all of the pressure is back on it. Y'all see that? See how that saddle is at an angle? Yes, okay? 
So she says, I got to get another saddle with a wider gullet. No, you don't. Okay. Matter of fact, if you even set the saddle back where it is and get one a wider gullet, you're sitting upon the sixth and seventh rib and you've got a chance of knocking a rib out. And I've had customers call me left and right saying their mule was tripping. And I told them, check out, you may have knocked out a rib because of what you've done here. And there it is. So now, Dave, we got a newer picture showing the, of where she did it. She put it right. And one of the things she said here, guy, everybody, okay, one of the things she said was, my mule walked better today than it ever has. Okay. You see the difference? See how the saddle is level? See how level it is? Look at that. Look at that difference compared to the other saddle that's up at an angle. Okay. Now, notice her front cinch. See that? See y'all see the difference? Look at the difference. There you are. Good job, Dave. I like that. <laughs> so, so folks, these saddle fitters, the horse people, you, you know, you hear me say it all the time, but now I'm showing you. This is just one example. You go to these, quote, mule training clinics, just watch how they're riding. Look at their saddles. Look how they're rigged. And if they're not riding a britchum in that flat ground, Turn around and get out of there. They don't have a clue. They don't, okay? I'm sorry. I, I wish people would understand that there is a difference between the mule and the horse. Some people know, okay? But right here, saddle fitter. In my own side, box, side, soapbox, Dave, yes, okay? I get so irritated because people say, oh, now look at that. Look at the difference. Setting nice and flat. Look at that. See that? And if for... If the leg wasn't back so much, but, and then go back to the breaching. Can you get back? You can look at the back of the breaching there. There, See, see how it's setting back? That's what you need to have. There you are. Now we're getting there. Now, the next thing we got to do, notice her stirrups are turned right. That's correct. Now get rid of those cinches and get some cinches on there that's worthwhile. I know we're somewhere. There you go. We busted out the soapbox for a little bit. Give Steve yeah. an opportunity to step up there for the benefit of all of us, of course. Benefit of all of, of us. Um, we had a couple comments here. Bill says, yeah, that was too much warmer. Um, Polly says, yes, I agree. Warming monthly is excessive. Polly says, my vet wants me to test the poop before warming. If the warm count is high, then I warm them all. I yes. haven't warmed my mules for almost a year because their poop doesn't have a high enough warm count. If they are on pasture, they have a higher chance of warm count. So there you go. Yep. Uh, Jim is watching, uh, Marilyn, I'll catch the replay, Marilyn, 30 degrees and windy. Cheryl says the vet said to warm them monthly while there are baby, while they are babies, maybe now they're older. I will cut them back to every three month rotation. We are in North Carolina. Um, any, any additional comments there, Steve? Well, again, folks, that's why I tell you, hair follicle test, blood test. I like the way the, the veterinarian says, let's do a test on the manure and let's see what's going on. All right. You don't go to the, the doctor and he tells you start eating more steak, you know, to fix the problem. No. When you go to the doctor, they start doing tests. Yes. Let's do the same thing with your mules. You really want to know. I just need to fix that. I got that fixed. You really want to know what's going on, folks. You take and take that manure to your vet or some, you know, some of these colleges have got uh, programs and this sort of thing uh, and do that. Now, you want to do a little deal with your test? Take your mason jar, put yourself about three road apples or so, shake it up really good, let it set overnight, see the next day, see how much sand is laying on the bottom, shake it up again where the manure is really broke up, okay? where it's almost not, not, uh, not visible and look on the bottom. Once it settles, how much sand is on the bottom, then that'll give you an idea of what possibly you could have for sand in his belly. All right. Uh, and this sort of thing. And that's where I like to use beet pulp, beet pulp. That's wet. Okay. I probably do that, uh, once a week, sometimes just a couple of times a month. Okay. Beet pulp does a good job of kind of cleaning out. There's some other products out there. I don't know much about them, but that'll give you a pretty good idea, folks. There you are. All right. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. 
that is pretty much it. Hey, this real quick, this will be fun. Let's uh, let's take a look right here, Steve. Roundabout to the blooming mule, which won't move at all. How many guys does it take to get a mule out? There's come six up, there and up, six on the inside. In. Twelve. The army of today may be nearly all mechanized. The day when it is completely mechanized won't come a moment too soon for these artillerymen. Ride him, cowboy. Wee. How about that? Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh man, my uh, let's see here. My, my, uh, somehow my stuff's getting all messed up here. I don't know why. You got to get your stuff in order. There we go. I got my stuff in order. Yeah. Hey, they needed a come along rope badly. Yeah. I wish they I needed, they you. needed Steve Edwards YouTube channel. There you are. You should have seen it when I was up at the Grand Canyon and we were training Marines up there. You know, of course they're big stout young guys and here's these old buggers, you know, trying to help them out. And they're trying to use their strength. We're using our brains. <laughs> <laughs> Marcia sent that in. I thought that would be fun to share. Folks, thanks so much for hanging out with us again. Really do appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out. Uh, call Steve, 602-999-6853. Leave a voicemail. You won't get him uh, to pick up the phone, not because he doesn't want to talk to you, but because, by golly, he'd be on the phone all day long if he answered it every time it rang. So he's doing everyone a favor and letting you leave a voicemail. He will get back to you. You can go to muleranch.com, find everything that we talked about here. Of course, there's all sorts of free stuff there. That's right. Free. You heard it. Our favorite F word, muleranch.com. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done? No, we're doing good. Hey, folks, uh, I'm leaving for Argentina on the 27th and uh, going to go over there with my, my daughter, I mean, my wife and my son and his wife and some other friends uh, for a variety of things. I'm going to be doing some hunting over there, but uh, I, I want to see them gauchos and I want to see some of those ranchos. So you're, I'm liable to have to, you're going to hear me come back. I'm liable to say, Los in the mucho for la blingas at the dia, vamos for the rancho, terminal for the dia. I couldn't have said it better myself. God bless everyone. Take